All right, welcome to today's class on DocuSign 201 with KW Command. My name is Leah with Scott and Roy Marketing, and in today's class, I'll be taking you through a little more of the advanced tips and tricks in DocuSign to help make your DocuSign experience a little more efficient, a little more effective, show you some additional uh, features that DocuSign has that you might not know about to really speed up your transaction process. All right, so first thing that we are going to do, and I am gonna pass out notes um, in case anyone has not attended the DocuSign 101 class quite yet. All right, that would typically be the prerequisite for this class, and I'll go ahead and throw this in the chat. And if you are watching this class recorded, I will uh, put the link to the class notes that I'm about to bring up in the description of the YouTube video below. So feel free to check that out. I just threw this in the Zoom chat. If you guys wanna open this, I'm just gonna pull it up on my screen so I can show you what I just shared. Um, so just a heads up, if you have not watched the DocuSign 101 video quite yet, all right, for this class to really make sense and for you to understand how DocuSign and Command works together, it's really important that you do watch the DocuSign 101 class. The most recent one will be at the top of this list here. And if you have to leave early for any reason, if you just wanna keep this open or bookmark it, this is a Google Doc. So as soon as I update the class recording from today, it'll update right on here. So I'll do that later today for you guys if you need to hop off early. I am. We are gonna work with these notes at the top. So just a heads up if you like written notes, I do have steps on how to use opportunities and DocuSign together. This is heavily gone over in the DocuSign 101 class. So if you're still unsure about how DocuSign and command work together, make sure you do watch that 101 class first. And then lastly here, I just wanna show you, I do have then quick 10 minute, 10 to 15 minute tip videos below here that will kind of break down what we're gonna go over in class today. So we'll be going over features. If you feel like you need to see that again, I do have these 10 minute tip videos recorded so you can pause it and follow along. I highlighted the ones that I would recommend watching next after today's class. So if you have any questions, of course, you can always let me know, drop it in the Zoom chat or shoot me an email, support at scottlaroymarketing.com with attention my name and the subject line, which is Leah. I'm putting this in the chat. And that will always come directly to me. So if you have any questions, you can always let me know. All right, so I'm just moving this off my screen here and we're gonna get rolling in command. Okay, so whenever you are starting a new transaction, with the KW system, right? We will always be starting our transactions in command. So let's go ahead and log in there. Uh, so to do that, I am on agent.kw.com. Again, that's agent.kw.com to go ahead and log in. So again, anytime you are starting a new transaction, right, you will always start that from command. And I'm going to quickly just go over that. All right, we'll be starting or spending most of our class in DocuSign itself. All right, but I'm going to quickly show you the steps. Now, again, this is going to be the more quick, quick paced class, especially when I'm going over the basics. Um, so if you need those basics, make sure you're watching that DocuSign 101 class, and then you can come back to watch this class recorded. All right, but, uh, because the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to walk you through the very important steps on how we're starting transactions in command. Now, whenever you start a new transaction, it's always important that you have your contact in your database first. All right, and the steps that I'm about to go over, and this will be a little quicker, just a heads up on the notes that I sent out, the, these steps I'm going over is the very first link on here. So it's steps to do a, a transaction uh, in command with DocuSign, steps one through 10. So just to bring that up, and I'll throw this in the chat too, but it is on the, that note sheet. All right, this will show you steps one through 10, and it is a very specific workflow to when you are starting, uh, when you are starting your transactions. All right, so really important you follow these uh, steps in this workflow. I'm just gonna go over that really briefly here. So of course, step one, we need to make sure our contact is in our database. Always step one, your contact has to be in your command database first to create an opportunity and then a room in DocuSign. So really important. So I'm just gonna go ahead and search for a contact here that I can go ahead and make an opportunity for. 
<clears throat> so I can go ahead and pull open any contact to make an opportunity and you'll see the option to create opportunities on the top right of the contact record. Now, if you've been working with opportunities and DocuSign rooms for a little bit here now, you'll know that you can also create your opportunities from the opportunities dashboard directly. So that's where my mouse is circling right now. Um, so you can always at, click on the handshake icon on the left hand side, right? That'll show you your pipelines. The opportunities class is great to attend as well. It's on that notes and tips guide. However, I always prefer creating my opportunities from the contact record itself. The reason being is whenever I go to the opportunities tab on the right hand side of my contacts, I can easily see, hey, have I already created an opportunity for this? I can see all opportunities created for this contact. So I can see, you know, especially if a contact is going to sell with me and then buy their next home, that is going to be two separate opportunities because it's two separate transactions. So just to expand on that a little more, okay, you will always have a separate opportunity per property that you sell or per transaction. Okay, it's um, not per client, all right? So again, if the client is selling their first home with you, buying a second home, that's going to be two separate opportunities because it's two separate properties. You have an investment client, right, who purchases multiple homes, those will all be separate opportunities because they are separate properties, okay? This is very much so the details that autofill are based on the property. So all the property information will autofill on your forms. That's why it's so important that we have an opportunity per property. And guys, I, I know this is quickly explained, so please drop any questions that you have in the chat. If you want further clarification about anything, I'm happy to focus further on anything I'm saying, just keep me posted. So under this opportunities tab in the contact record, so if you're just joining us in class now, right, all I did so far was I pulled up a contact in my database to create an opportunity from the opportunities tab. You'll see that option to create opportunity. And just pointing out the three main fields that you have to fill out to continue here. All right, three main fields. If you'd like to jot this down, this is not in the notes. All right, opportunity type is one of them. So opportunity type, you always need to pay attention if you are adding this to your listing pipeline, buyer, landlord, or tenant. So I'll go ahead and put buyer. It doesn't really matter which one you select for today's class. If you'd like to do listing or buyer, the concept will be the same. Second field you have to pay attention to is the client field. All right, so I do see that client already displaying because I'm creating the opportunity from the contact record. But double check that, especially if there's a co-seller, right? So if there's a spouse on the transaction, you'll wanna go ahead and add them now. And then the third, oh, and one more thing about that co-buyer or co-seller, that contact has to be in your, your contact database already. Uh, so when you're adding that co-seller or co-buyer, you're not, adding them to your database, they need to already be there to pop up in this field. And then lastly, we have that commission rate field, okay, that is required. So that'll be the third and final field that you have to do something with. And that's just talking about your side of the transaction. So you can put the 3% or whatever you usually charge. And that is changeable. So if they do something rude, like haggle you down to 2.5, you can't always change that when the time comes. All right, so again, the three main fields to pay attention to, opportunity type, your client and co-client, and the commission rate. Of course, the other fields are also important, okay, and that's gone over in detail in the DocuSign 101 class and opportunities class. So if you want more info on any of that, of course, you can drop it in the chat here. I'm happy to expand on that, um, but also I would check out those classes and click create. So you can see when I'm going to create an opportunity that can really fly through this, right? I can fill out those three fields, boom, my opportunity is created and I can access DocuSign immediately from that opportunity. So I'll go ahead and click on the details here, or I'm sorry, click on the name of that opportunity and that'll open up the opportunity details, right? Which all this information will autofill into DocuSign. And of course, we access DocuSign from the Documents tab of your opportunity. And don't do this yet, please, because I'm going to show you 
a newer feature that's really cool um, from here, but it's important that you do not click start a transaction yet, right? Because that's the key that'll do it, as you guys know, right? Once you create that opportunity, the next step, and don't do this yet, is we'll click start a transaction that'll make the room in your DocuSign account, and that will link your opportunity to your DocuSign room. Now, just to harp again, it's so important that you follow this specific workflow of steps, right? It's just three main steps here. One, we add the contact to our database and command. Two, we create an opportunity. And three, from the opportunity specifically, that's where we're starting the transaction. Okay, that's where we're starting that DocuSign room. And again, don't do that yet. But really important to follow that workflow so that your opportunity and your DocuSign room link. Okay, if you go to DocuSign directly to create your DocuSign room, that's fine. It's not the end of the world, but it will not link to your opportunity. So there'll just be some downfalls there. Again, not the end of the world. If you have questions on how to manage that, I have a tip video. All right, but so hopefully you fully understand that those three main steps are really, really significant. But let me show you real quick this brand new feature. This is not in the DocuSign 101 class. <clears throat> I would say this feature launched in the last two, three months here. Now, what this feature does is it will automatically add your required forms to your DocuSign room for you. So instead of you having to go in to DocuSign and add each form manually, if you pick the checklist type first, so I am on the Documents tab of my opportunity. Uh, this is DocuSign 201. So if you need the DocuSign 101 class, I'll drop that in the chat. One sec. All right, so on the left-hand side here, it'll either say pick checklist type or it'll already have your checklist displaying depending on how many checklists your market center has. So on the left hand side, make sure we go ahead and select that checklist if, if it's not already displaying. All right, well, whatever would apply. And of course your checklist will be different than mine because this is added by my office staff. Okay, and just heads up, if you guys are wanting to watch the DocuSign 101 class first, I did just drop that in the chat, Zoom chat and I will put it in the YouTube description below as well, if that helps. But this class is recorded so you can always come back. All right, so from here on the left hand side, once I have selected the checklist that applies, you can click on the folders on the left hand side. And if your market center has set this up, okay, so this is set up by your market center staff. So if this feature is not in your account, there's nothing wrong with your account, your market center is just working on setting that up. But you may see if you click on the checklist on the left side, this teal DS next to some of the forms that are marked required. All right, so again, this blue DS right here, teal, right? These are the forms that are automatically going to pull into your DocuSign room once I click start a transaction. So it's really important that you pick the checklist first on the left-hand side so that DocuSign knows which forms to pull in. So again, on the left-hand side, check to see under these checklists here, if you do have these teal DSs, okay, that means those forms are automatically going to pull into my DocuSign room when I click start a transaction on the top right. If you don't have those teal DSs, that just means your office staff is still working on setting that up. And if you are office leadership on this call and would like instructions on how to set that up for your market center, shoot us an email, support at scottlavoriemarketing.com. I'd be more than happy to send those to you. So now let me show you what this feature actually does in real time. Okay, so again, the important part of what I just did is I selected the checklist and I'm noting these blue DSs. So now, and you can do this with me if you'd like, I'm going to click start a transaction on the right hand side. And yours will probably go directly to DocuSign unless you have both linked up. So if you only have DocuSign linked to the command settings, I'll just take you directly to DocuSign. All right, so we're putting in our DocuSign login and password. And I'll see once I come into my DocuSign room now, this is a brand new DocuSign room, but all of these forms are automatically pulled into my DocuSign room because I picked the checklist before starting my DocuSign room. Okay, now again, if, if your command account, your opportunity doesn't have that feature quite yet, your market center is most likely still working on setting that up. Um, if, 
If you need help setting that up in your market center, just let me know. Um, support at scottlauriemarketing.com. You can put attention to my name, which is Leah, L-E-A-H. But that saves me a ton of time. Now I don't have to come up to add on the top right of my room and add all of these forms manually. They're already here, which is beautiful. Of course, if you do not have this feature available in your account quite yet, no worries. You can just come into your DocuSign room directly in the Documents tab to click Add to add your DocuSign forms further. All right, so on the top right where we click Add, right, all of the interactive forms, meaning the forms I can just start clicking on to type in, will all be under the DocuSign forms option. So note that blue icon here. This will come back into play as we go through class. Right, this blue icon that says form on all of these, that does indicate that that is an interactive form that I can just start typing in. So I can get more of those interactive forms under DocuSign forms here that will search my libraries on the left hand side so I can go ahead and grab any forms that I need. And again, any, any of these that have that blue form icon means it's an interactive fillable form, one with fields that I can just start typing in. All right, so now the next thing I wanna show you guys is how to create templates from these forms. Now, if you're looking for steps, I don't need to keep saying this, but if you're looking for steps on how to edit these forms and send that for electronic signature, you know, as far as the interactive forms. So that's what we heavily go over in the DocuSign 101 class. Um, so if you need steps on that, um, that is in the DocuSign 101 class. And I also have on the tips and notes guide here, this is a 30 minute overview too. So if you just want a 30 minute overview of DocuSign 101, you can watch that as well. However, what I'm gonna show you now is how to create templates of these forms. So what I mean is you can actually pre-fill these interactive forms. So with the most commonly used information, maybe your brokerage information, what you typically put in these fields, so that when you start your next transaction, if you can tell me what your, what your questions are instead of just saying lost, so that would be really helpful. Um, I'd be more than happy to help you, but this is the DocuSign 201 class, guys, so it is a little faster paced. All right, so I might suggest watching that DocuSign 101 class if you feel lost. All right, so what I'm going to show you now is how we can make these into templates. All right, so again, that you can apply the pre-filled form into your transaction to use that every time to help save you time. All right, so again, uh, any of these forms right here. Right, you can just click to start open and typing in right and these are those interactive forms that we can just click start typing in and this will allow you to send this to your client for electronic signatures. Right, so these interactive forms, of course, you can see how easy it is to click to start typing. So now let's take a look at how to make pre-filled templates of these forms to help save you time. So if you can follow me, let's come on up to the My Docs section. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to make templates of these forms and then apply the templates to your DocuSign rooms. And you can jot down notes. Uh, I don't believe these are on the notes, but I do have a separate tip on the notes and tips guide. If you want to jot this down, where you'll go to create and edit these templates are under my docs on the very top white toolbar. Then we're going to come down to form templates. And this is a newer feature too, maybe in the last six months or so. My days are kind of merging together. So a uh, very cool new feature, very exciting. So again, just my docs on the top white toolbar. Then right under that, you'll see form templates. And on the right-hand side, we'll have the option to create form templates. Okay, so if this is a blank page for you, that's totally fine. And if you haven't worked with this quite yet, well, let's go ahead and click create form template on the top right. This will give me a couple options here to locate the form that I'm going to grab to 
create a template from. All right, so the idea here is we're going to go ahead and find a form that you use for most transaction, whether it's a listing agreement or a buyer agency agreement. Okay, you can either search your DocuSign form libraries or groups. I would recommend groups uh, personally if you have those set up in your market center, just makes it a little easier to find your forms. But depending on what you have selected in this first drop down, whether you're selecting groups or library, that'll change what you see in the second drop down. So <clears throat> play with that. However, you find your forms is totally fine. And it, and it takes a little practice, right, to start locating your forms and memorizing where they are set up. If you have any trouble finding any specific forms, first of all, I'm happy to look in your account, but your office staff is who uh, organizes these forms. So they'll be able to guide you to any missing forms that you're not able to find. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pull in um, a listing agreement. This will this concept will work for any of your forms. So feel free to bring in whichever form you would like to, just to practice on here, and click use. All right, and that'll bring up the form. And of course, your form is going to look different than mine. This is a North Carolina form. It'd be nice if they all look the same. Um, but no matter what your form looks like here, the concept that we're looking for is we're going to go through and add in all the information that you would have on most, let's say, listing agreements. Okay. Usually, when you use this form, is there a certain you know data that you put in, even if it's an NA, right? That you don't put in anything. You just put an NA. Do you select a certain checkbox, right? This will all be changeable. Once you pull the template into your DocuSign room, you can completely edit it at that point. But the idea is putting in as much information on the template that as possible. So when you pull that into your next transaction, it's already half filled out for you, right? To help save you time. So the first thing I might do is maybe add in my brokerage information. If there are any check boxes that you would, you know, most of the time check off that option. Again, this is always changeable once you pull it in for that specific room. All right, so you can go through here and really, you know, find any fields. If you usually write an NA, you can go ahead and pop that in. So you can go through the entire form here. And you can even save separate versions of this template as well. So I'll show you that. So if you'd like to have, let's say, a listing agreement for cash deals versus um, finance deals, I'll show you how you can actually create two versions of this template to use depending on the specific situation of the transaction. All right, and I know this is this part is fast. It doesn't give you enough time to really go through and focus on editing this. I'll give you the steps again, how we got back here to edit it so you can continue editing your template after today's class. But let me show you now how we would save this and apply the template to our DocuSign room. So if you have any questions on this, let me know. But right, the idea is putting in pre-filling as much content as you can into this form. So when you pull this into your next transaction, it saves you time being half filled out. And of course, as I mentioned, all of this will be changeable once you pull the template into that specific room. All right, so I might wanna change the name of this. So I always forget to do this. So if you could join me on the top left here, clicking that pencil icon. Let me go ahead and change the name of this. So I know that it's my template here. So let's say I wanna name this uh, listing agreement. You know, and you can just like name that template, or if you're doing this for a specific scenario like cash deals versus finance deals, you know, you could always indicate that here and click save. Oh, sorry, and then click that um, check mark on the far right of the name field, and that'll save it. Okay, so make sure we're renaming that the pencil icon on the top left, and then save that. And then we can go ahead and save and close this template. Okay, 
So just in case anyone is just joining us now, I'm going to drop in the chat a link to where we are. So if you want to just click on that link, it'll take you directly to where I am on my screen here. All right, so far what we have done right to get here, if you'd like to jot down these notes to come back and edit this further, we clicked on my docs on the very top white toolbar. And form templates right under that. And what we did is click to create a new one right create form template, but when you come back in here, you can just simply click on edit to the right of any of your templates to edit that right away. Now, just to show you as well, so this little drop down arrow, you do have a copy option. So the cool thing is, let's say I go through and create an entire template for a listing agreement, let's say for finance deals. I can then come back in here and I can copy that template. It'll duplicate the template. So I can go in and make a few tweaks to make that a template for cash deals, right? So you can very easy, easily copy these templates to make different templates depending on the different situations for your transactions. A uh, good question, Kelly. Um, Kelly asks, will the new saved form template, is that what will be the doc that generates initially from command? Um, no, it is not, but I'm gonna show you now how to apply this template to those forms that were automatically uh, pulled in. So it's really just a couple clicks extra. Great question, and I'll show you that now. All right, so let's talk about how we actually add these templates and use these templates in our DocuSign rooms. <clears throat> so to do that, I'm going to navigate back over to that practice room I have. So you guys can do that by clicking on rooms on the top or dashboard, and that'll take you over to your DocuSign rooms. Dashboard just has your most recently used rooms. Okay, so however, if you can go into any room, but if you have a practice room for today's class, you can go on over to that and just make sure you're in the documents tab here. Okay, so we're back to the forms that were automatically brought in from my command account. So now in order to apply a template that I have created, I'm going to right click so this is if this scenario is if you already have the DocuSign form in your room and you want to apply a template i'm also going to show you how you can just add the template um, from your documents as well that'll be in your documents tab but if the form is already in your room right in the documents tab here's the form i'm going to right click on it and click apply form template now you will not have this option at all in the drop down if you don't have a template for that form. Like this form, for example, I don't have a template created, so I don't even have the option to apply in a form template. If I right click on a form that does have templates, that's when I see the apply form template option. And you know, if you have multiple templates created, so if you did have a cash and a finance template two separately created, you would see all the different template options here. So you can select which template would apply and then click apply. And that will go ahead and put all the pre-filled data onto this existing form in your DocuSign room. Now I'm gonna show you, so you can see that automatically put in my brokerage information here, automatically put in an A where I had things checked, right? So I automatically filled in my form so I can go through at this point, edit the form further, right, change things up that maybe didn't, doesn't apply to this transaction, but that puts me a step ahead of the game. I'm already pre-filled here. Now let me show you, show you the second way to apply these templates. So if the form is not already in your DocuSign room, okay, so if it's not already in your DocuSign room, we'd come up to add, like normal, to add your DocuSign forms. DocuSign forms here. So just to show you an example of one that I don't already have in my DocuSign room. Okay, so let's say these two right here. So I select both these check boxes. Only one of them has an option for a dropdown. So if you have a template created, 
for that form, you'll see an extra drop down under this new template column, and you can go ahead and select that. Clearly, I practice with the listing agreement quite a bit. So, you know, if you had a cash deal or a finance deal, you can select which listing agreement template you're applying there. And if you don't have a template created for that form, you just won't see a drop down. Okay, just a just a heads up why that's different. So now when I click add selected, that would automatically add in the templated version of the form right away to my room. Do you have any questions on that? Please let me know. This is a newer feature, very exciting feature that you can definitely implement into working with DocuSign to help make things a little quicker. All right, so now let's talk about editing PDFs in DocuSign, All right? So in DocuSign, right, editing these interactive forms are great. Very easy to just start typing in the forms, but let's give a different situation. Let's say that the agent on the other side um, let's say sent you an offer to purchase as a PDF, right? It sent it over via email um, and it's attached to the email as a PDF. So now you need your clients to be able to sign that PDF, okay? I'm going to show you how you can add PDFs to DocuSign, edit those PDFs and send for electronic signatures. These same steps would apply to editing signed forms as well. So just as I'm going through that, keep that in your mind. I'm going to explain how the two kind of work together as well. All right, but these steps will, will really apply to editing PDFs or any signed forms that come back as well. And I'll explain that fully so you feel comfortable. But on the top right here where it says add, I'm going to add a PDF that I can just show you as an example. If you have a PDF on your computer that you'd like to practice with, feel free to go ahead and do that. Or you can just watch on my screen, either one. So where we have add on the top right here, I am in the documents tab of my DocuSign room. We have that add option. So again, right with that blue form icon, those DocuSign forms will all be interactive, all the ones that you can just start typing in. If we need to search from our computer, of course, I'm gonna choose that top option. So in this situation, again, right, the agent on the other side, let's say sent you an offer via email, attached to an email, you saved it to your computer, and now you can pull it into your DocuSign room. And right out the bat, right off the bat, I can tell that this PDF, right? I can see by this icon here that that's a PDF and not an interactive form, right? Because when I clicked on my interactive forms, I could just start clicking to start typing. However, by nature, PDFs are not editable, right? I open that up, I can't click to edit anything. Okay. However, DocuSign will allow you to pull that into an envelope to add initial boxes or signature fields so that it will allow your client to sign a PDF. Or if you need to make edits to a PDF, you can do that as well. So to show you how to do that, all right? Um, so we need to pull this into an envelope and you can pull the form into an envelope in a bunch of different ways. Um, so depending on how you feel most comfortable. I'm going to pull that into an envelope by clicking on the checkbox to the top left of that form. And you'll see once I click this checkbox, this bulk actions menu appears. All right, so if you need to pull multiple forms into an envelope, which generally, right, you may need to send maybe three forms at a time for the listing paperwork or however many it might be, right, you can click the checkboxes on the top left to add multiple. So to select multiple. And then on this bulk actions menu up here, that docu or the create envelope, right? That'll always be that center icon that looks like a pencil, well, pen. You know, it shows they're signing, All right? So whenever you're ready to get forms signed, this is the step you would need to do. When you need to send your forms for electronic signature, the first thing we do is we create an envelope, much like snail mail, right? If you're gonna send forms in the physical mail, what would you do first? Grab an envelope, same concept. So I'm selecting the forms I want, then I'm adding them to the envelope. That's that center icon, right, with that pin icon. That pulls me into the envelope here. Okay, snail mail, channeling snail mail here. I grab the envelope, I put my documents in it. What would be the next step? Adding recipients to the envelope. So I'll come over here and under add recipients, I'll select that top option for room participants. 
The main thing for you to know here when you're adding recipients, always, always select the top option and you're good to go. So these room participants, selecting room participants, this is pulling the contact information from command directly. So that's why it's so important that, you know, the first step in this whole process here was we added our contacts to command first to then create the opportunity and then start the DocuSign transaction. And it automatically pulls in the contact information from command. So it's kind of like your command database is your database for DocuSign. All right, so I'm selecting the clients I want to sign and click add selected. All right, so when you're adding recipients here, you are not adding yourself necessarily unless it's a form that you need to sign. So if you do not need to sign this form, you do not need to add yourself as a recipient. So I see my clients can sign here. You can add a little um, message if you would like to explain something further they need to do on the form. But really on this page, we're just adding the recipients and clicking next. Guys, please let me know if you have any questions in that envelope section. More than happy to expand on that. All right, but um, no, Kelly, you don't need to rename the envelope. Um, you can, uh, however, that would not be a necessary step. But you can also edit the subject like on the very bottom. Um, oh, I do have something to add on that, Kelly. Um, however, renaming the envelope can be helpful, especially when you start to send multiple envelopes in a transaction, um, right? Just an envelope would indicate just any time that you've sent one or a group of forms out for electronic signatures. So renaming the envelope can be great for you to tell the difference if you wanna rename that. It's really just for your eyes to see you know, what forms were sent in this envelope, right? And I'll, I'll show you where, where that would update, where the name would update. Um, so that you can decide if you would like to rename your envelopes, because it can be really great for organization purposes. So I'll explain on that further, Kelly, in just a moment here. All right, so now that I clicked on next, right, that takes me on over to the form itself, so the PDF, and this is where I'm able to actually start editing the PDF. So for example, let's say, uh, use your imagination, let's say that the this has already been signed by the clients on the other side, the agent sent this to me via email, has a PDF attached, saved it to my computer, added it to DocuSign. We went through these steps, and now I need my clients to be able to electronically sign. <coughs> Excuse me. So on the bottom of each page here, I need my clients to initial, for example. So what I want to do is on the left-hand side, okay, you'll see the option to add initial boxes. But what I want to point your attention to is the drop down on the very top left that has my clients' names in it, along with a corresponding color. So you'll notice if you select the other client, it changes all these fields to that corresponding color. So that's really helpful for you to be able to tell quickly if you've added initial boxes for both clients. So for example, if I need both clients to sign here, I would need to essentially add one blue initial box for this client then change that over to the other client to add an initial box for that client. So I can easily see here, all right, great, this is client one, this is client two, they're both gonna be able to sign this. So I can go through the form and add, you know, those initial boxes one by one, a little tedious if you have 13 pages, for example. Um, so I'll show you just a quick little extra tip, um, and this is not required, but you can copy and paste these fields. So if you want to copy and paste these onto each page, that does typically expedite it. Um, so what you can do, and again, this is kind of like a next level tip, so feel free to just watch and apply this when you can. Um, however, to select these, I'm going to click and hold my mouse to draw a rectangle around them. So I clicked and held my mouse to draw a box around it, and you can tell that it, it selects both of them, right? They're both blue. So now on your keyboard, okay, you can either do, if you're, if you're a PC user, this will be control C as in copy or command C for any Mac users. So I'm selecting these two fields, control C as in copy for a PC user, 
If you have a Mac, it'll be Command C. Now I'm going to scroll on down to the next section I want to add those initial boxes to. And I'm just going to kind of click in the general area that I want to paste those in. This can be a little fickle, but I think you'll like it. And to paste those, all right, we're going to do Control V as in Victor. Or if you have a Mac, that's Command V as in Victor. And you can see that it pastes those boxes in right away. And they're a little off, right? So I can click to kind of move them around. Uh, yeah, uh, the drag, if you drag, if you click and hold your mouse and drag um, a box that should work for both Mac and PC users. If that's giving you any trouble, you can also select both by clicking one, then hold shift on your on your keyboard and then click the second one. And that'll select both of them. So that'll be like the same concept, Stephanie, if the dragging and drawing that um, rectangle isn't working. Just uh, click the first one, then hold shift on your keyboard, keep holding shift to click the second one, and it will select both control C or command C for copy, and then command V as in Victor or control V as in Victor to paste it. And, and this, of course, is not a required trick by any means. Um, you can absolutely go down to the bottom of each of these fields and manually add the initial initial boxes one by one for your clients. Just a little less quick. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, signature fields, guys, same concept. There is just one thing to know on signature fields that I do want to point out. And this is specifically if you are adding signature fields to a PDF. So when we're adding fields like this, when you're adding signature fields, same exact concept as far as right adding one that's blue and adding one that's yellow for each respective client. However, the signature fields do not automatically date and time, add the date and time stamp to the signature. So if you're adding signature fields, you need to add the date signed field. Now the date signed, when your client goes to sign, it'll automatically fill in the date that they sign. But you as the agent need to take this extra step to add the date signed field only when you're adding signature fields, okay? Signature fields, then you need to add the date sign field. And guys, again, this is only when you're editing PDFs. So if you are working with an interactive form, right? One of those ones with the blue form icon that I can just click to start typing. This is done for you, right? The, it'll automatically have this date signed field. However, if you're working with a PDF where you're manually adding these initial or signature fields, for signature fields specifically, you just need to add that date sign field. That's the only extra thing. So I would jot that down just as a quick note. Last thing I wanna show you on um, editing PDFs here, let's talk about if it's a field that you need to edit as the agent. All right, so, so far I've showed you how to add in initial boxes and signature fields. You can actually also add in text fields. Let's say if there's um, you know, a field on the form talking about property, personal property conveying, and you want the client to fill that out, right? Or if it's, you know, residential property disclosure, you want the client to fill, fill out that field. Whatever the case may be, you can add a text box, and you'll notice that text box is that blue color correlating to this specific client. So at, when that client is going through to sign the entire form, it would force them to fill out any text fields that you add that are their specific color. Okay, so that color really matters. So again, if you add a text box that is a, under a client's specific color, that would force them to fill out that field as they're going through and signing it. So that can be a great thing. However, if it's a field you need to fill out as the agent, right? These are pretty new. Um, on the left hand side, this is really the main other time you'll switch on this gray toolbar on the far left. Okay, it, it's, it's standard fields is where we've been. But then there's one extra that's pre fill tools. And you'll notice these are all gray because this is for you as the agent to utilize. So let's say, you know, the agent on the other side misspelled your client's name or use, let's say, this client should be Anthony Stark instead of Tony Stark. You as the agent can come through, <coughs> excuse me, add a strike through. All right, that's what this line option does. I can add a strike through. 
and then add a text box here. And of course, these text boxes are pretty little, but you can expand them as you can see. And I can put in the correct information. Now, as long as I am using these gray options here, this will not make your client fill them out and it will allow your clients to be able to see that. All right, so if you have any questions on that, please let me know. Um, from here, what I would typically do is come up to act, I'm sorry, come up to recipient preview to just kind of preview what it looks like for both clients going to sign, just really for my own comfort. And then I click on send to go ahead and send this out to my clients to sign. Yeah, sure. Um, so that last part for agents, if you are needing to fill something out as the agent, let me go back into the form. So if you are needing to fill in something as the agent, let's say you need to add a text box or you need to correct something that the other agent did, okay, all of your fields are under pre-fill tools. So on the gray toolbar on the left-hand side, these pre-fill tools, you'll notice these are all gray, so they're void of a color, right? So that is for you as the agent to utilize. So you can actually use a line tool to strike through anything that's incorrect. Um, and then you can add text boxes as well um, to fill in the correct information. Um, Nancy, great question. No initialing if agent changes. So check in with your broker in charge as far as you know um, any compliance items. Now in this scenario that I'm showing you, right, this is when the client has already signed. So yeah, you can add initial boxes and that may be necessary. Please check with your broker. There are addendums as well to make changes if they prefer. And I'll talk about editing sign forms in just a second here. But in general, right, if they need to initial for a change, especially like if you're editing a fully signed form, so if it's a fully executed form, okay, when your forms come back to DocuSign fully signed, that'll come back as a PDF, okay, that's different than dot loop, so I'll show you that real quick as we wrap up class here. But when forms come back signed, they will come back as a PDF, so that's what I meant by editing signed forms and editing PDFs are the same steps in DocuSign. And as Nancy has so wonderfully uh, pointed out, if you are editing a fully executed form, right, any changes you make need to be initialed by your by all the clients in the transaction. Of course, run all of this by your broker in charge for compliance reasons. But I just want to show you how to do that step. Of course, there are addendums for changes as well. But right, if you made any of these changes, we would want to use the pre-fill tools, right, for the agent information to fill that out. So strike that through and add the text box. And then if you need to add your client's initial boxes now to sign for that change, I would switch back up to the standard fields up here, right, to get me back to the colored fields. So I could go ahead and add in the initial boxes wherever they need to go on the left-hand side for each respective client. So when I click continue, it'll send to the client to have them sign right there. Let me know if you guys have any further questions on that part as well. Thanks, Nancy, for pulling, bringing that up. So lastly here, just to wrap up class, I do want to show you guys that how what a signed form looks like when it comes back to DocuSign, because that will look, it will look different than the forms that we've been looking at. So this should just take me about two minutes here to show you signed forms as well. And Kelly, um, just to answer your question from earlier, actually, let me do that in the actual DocuSign room. Uh, Kelly, I'm also gonna answer your question about if you should name your DocuSign envelopes. So let me do that first. So for example, when you go to your envelopes tab in your DocuSign room, so it's a DocuSign room I, I practice on. Um, and as you can see, I have sent quite a few envelopes. What this means is I have sent forms to be signed a lot of times, right? And you can see that this is the name of the envelope where it just says, please DocuSign. So if I were to have changed that to, let's say, like uh, offer to purchase and residential property disclosure, whatever the forms are, that would make it really easy for me to come back to the envelopes tab to really organize my envelopes and easily find the envelope I need for those specific forms. So yeah, Kelly, I would definitely recommend actually um, naming your envelopes for your own organization, but it's not required. 
Okay, lastly here, guys, let me just show you real quick what a signed form looks like when it comes back to DocuSign. It's just a really important concept and a little wonky, in my opinion. Um, so what you need to know is that when you send a form for electronic signature, if you are sending that, let's say, to two or more people, that form will not come back to your DocuSign room signed until all parties have signed that form. So you as the agent will receive an email notification each time that the form is signed. So again, let's say there's a husband and wife signing. You'll receive an email that the husband has signed and attached to that email, that notification email, you'll have a PDF attached with the version signed by just the husband. Okay. When you come into your DocuSign room though, you will not see the signed copy come back until both the husband and wife have signed it. So until all parties have signed, you will not see that in your DocuSign room, okay? Now you'll see, I can see the ones, right? Remember we talked about these icons, the blue icon for that form icon, meaning it's interactive versus this PDF right here, right? That's what we just worked on. Now when it comes back signed, it'll have this green icon showing signed and it will also be a PDF. So essentially when you send a form, okay? So let's say this is the form I started with, right? I can see it's the blue, icon, meaning this form is fillable. I sent it to my clients for electronic signature. When it comes back, it'll come back as a totally separate copy of the form marked with this green signed icon. So then you'll essentially have two copies of the form, the original that I can edit at any time, not signed, and then the signed version with that green signed icon that will have the signatures and it will not be editable. The point is to preserve the signatures Right, so I see the signatures, there's nothing I can do to erase the signatures, which is wonderful. If I need to make any edits to this form, that's when I would pull it into the envelope, like we just did. This is a slightly different way to pull it into the envelope, but right, that same icon, that pen icon, pulling the form into the envelope would allow me to edit the form, right? Add fields if I needed to make any strike throughs or add initial boxes and so forth, okay? So again, that signed form will not come back to your DocuSign room until all parties have electronically signed that, just so it's not throwing you off. All right, guys, if you have any questions on how that works, please do not hesitate to reach out to me, support at scottleroymarketing.com. Pay attention, Leah, L-E-A-H in the subject line. I'm more than happy to take a look at your account specifically and any transactions you have. I did just throw the <clears throat> link in the chat again for these DocuSign notes and tips. So I will have this updated recording on the top later today. And I would recommend, you know, kind of just eyeing over, especially the ones I highlighted in yellow to see if that's something that you wanna work or you wanna watch next. And these should be about 10, 15 minute videos. Um, but if you ever need a quick tip video that you're not able to find for DocuSign, shoot me an email. If you're running into an obstacle, I probably have to and have a workaround. So support at scottlaurymarketing.com, more than happy to help. All right, guys, I'm sticking on for questions. If you have questions, drop that in the chat. Uh, otherwise, I will stop the recording and I hope you have a great rest of your day.